This is Miss Wiles, and in this video, we're looking at a rational exponent. We are probably going to include some other video, um, some other problems with exponents in this particular video. In this question, we have uh, which expression is equivalent to y to the four sevenths power. Now we have a rational exponent. It's a fraction. When we have a fraction exponent. The numerator, because we don't use baby terms like the one on top, the numerator um, is the power of the radicand. The radicand is that expression that's underneath the radical sign. The denominator is the power of the root. And by that I mean um, if the denominator is a 2, then that's the same as having a square root. We just don't put the 2 where we would put the 3. When we have a 1 -third, we have a cubed root. A 1 -fourth would be a fourth root. In this particular example, the power in the numerator is not a 1. Because the power in the numerator is not a 1, it becomes the power of the radicand. So let me pull all this together. If I had y to the 1 half power, that would be the square root of y. If I had y to the 1 third power, that would be the cubed root of y. If I have y to the 1 fourth power, that would be the fourth root of y. If I switch this around a little bit and instead of a numerator being 1, I have something like y to the 3 halves, that becomes with the 2 in the denominator also the square root of y, but now instead of y being to the first power, y is to the third power. And if I had y to the 4 thirds, the 3 in the denominator indicates the third root, and the 4 in the numerator is the power of y. y to the 5 fourths would be the fourth root of y to the fifth. So in our example, which expression is equivalent to y to the 4 sevenths, you would have multiple choice, but you should be able to recreate what that is or transform it from exponential form to radical form, and that would be the seventh root of y to the fourth. So the denominator... In the same way, with that same information about what the numerator and the denominator in a rational um, exponential expression mean, we can take something like x to the y over 2 power, and we can transform that into its radical expression also. Um, that would be with the 2 in the denominator, that would be the square root. And then for the radicand, we have x, and then that would be to the y power. I know it looks strange, but those are in, they indicate, they're like blanks. Like x can be anything, y could be anything, and it would fit this form. So that's x to the y over 2 equals the square root of x to the y power. In the same way, you can go from the square root of a to the b power, and you can change that to an exponential expression. And you change that to an exponential expression by knowing that a is the base. The square root shows me that I'm going to have a 2 in the denominator, and the b shows me that I'm going to have a b in the numerator. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Okay. So the b as an exponent under the radical tells me that I'm going to have a b in the numerator of the exponent, and the square root tells me that I will have a square. Let's do one more example of that. If we have the cubed root of xy to the fourth power. 
Let's not let's give that an X. No, let's give that a Z. Lots of variables going on here. So the cubed root of XY to the Z power. What that will look like is X to the one third power because X is to the first power and we're taking the cubed root. And then Y to the Z over three power. The Z does not act upon the X because this is not in parentheses. If I had the X, Y in parentheses, then this would be X, Y in parentheses to the Z over three power. And there we can see it. Let's pause here. In this particular problem, the cubed root of x, y squared, not only could your answer be x to the one-third, y to the two-thirds, but more often you will see your answer as x, y squared, all of that to the one-third power. This is how you will see that answer expressed. Everything that's in the radical Everything that's under the radical, also known as the radicand, raised to the one-third power to show the cubed root. Could someone ask me in class if this was a Z or a 2? Um, it should have been a Z. If that's a Z, that's a Z. If that's a 2, that's a 2. It all acts the same. Nothing changes. Things just get rewritten in different ways. Hey, we're going to pause here to write another question. When you're, if you're playing straight through on the video, um, it's going to appear as if by magic. All right, we're back. The first question was um, that I've made up here is which expression is equivalent to 96 x to the ninth y to the fourth? All of that raised to the one fifth power. Because we want to be smart test takers, also. I'm not necessarily going to go through how you would work this problem out step by step. I'm going to show you how when you have multiple choice what you can do. Now there is one part of this problem that is going to help us make our determination as to which answer is correct. And that is 96 to the one fifth power. If I look at the number part of this problem, it is 96 to the one fifth power. And if I look at the multiple choice is that I have, I have numbers in the multiple choice. The numerical part would be 2 times the fifth root of 3, or 16 times the fifth root of 3. 32 times the fifth root of 1. 16 times the fifth root of 1. Because that is part of each answer choice, I can focus on it, and my calculator will help me with numbers. It won't help me with variables, but it'll help me with numbers. So I can take what I have here, and I can actually, with my calculator, do 90, I can calculate 96 to the one-fifth power. That's 96 to the one-fifth power. 96 to the one-fifth power is 2.49146187. One of these numerical parts of my multiple choice, my multiple choices is going to be the same. So I check each one of them in order. The first one is 2 times the fifth root of 3. Now in this calculator we press math and number five, and then we say, okay, I want to put a five to make it the fifth root, and I want it to be the fifth root of three. When I fill in those parts, I press enter, and it is exactly the same as 96 to the one-fifth power. Since none of the others are the same, A is my correct answer. If I want to look at the variables, then I can look at these variables and see what has happened 
Um, but for the purposes of this exam, for the purposes of this test, let's leave this problem at this because if you can do that part, <laughs> then you can do what you need to do for this part of the test. For the next question, because it's not as complicated as the last one, I am going to take you through a different method of solving it. Because we have 16x cubed, all of that raised to the one-half power, I'm not going to give you the multiple choice on this one. <laughs> the reason I'm taking you a little deeper with this problem is because we have both of these expressions raised to the one-half power, which is a square root. We can find the square root of 16. 16 is a perfect square, and the square root of 16 is 4. Because we have this x cubed, we have the square root of x cubed, or we can look at it as we have the square root of 3 halves, I'm going to take one of those x's out and make this the square root of x. Look at it this way. 3 minus 2. I'm taking it to the 1 half power. I'm going to take one of those out, bring it out here, and leave the third one inside. If I take the square root of x cubed, the square root of x cubed is the square root of x times x times x. And I can take this little pair out and make it x times the square root of x. Similarly, 25 to the 1 half power is the square root of 25, which is 5. And then I have the square root of x. x to the 1 half power is just the square root of x. Then I bring my numbers and things together. I've got 4 times 5, that's 20. I've got an x. And then I've got a square root of x times the square root of x. The square root of anything times the square root of the same thing is x. The square root of x times the square root of x is x. And because I have 20 times x times x, then I have 20x squared. But guess what? I know you're not going to work it out this way. So what you're going to do, because you're looking for an expression that is exactly the same as 16x cubed to the 1 half power times 25x to the 1 half power, pick a number that you like. My favorite number is 3. So I store that value, I store that value for x. I make the calculator think that x is 3. And I take exactly what I have in the original problem and I type it into my calculator. We're going to pause while I do that. Because the calculator thinks that x is 3 now, it is going to evaluate this expression and tell me that this 16x cubed to the 1 half power times 25x to the 1 half power equals 180. Now I can take my multiple choices and I can determine which one is the actual answer by putting those particular expressions into the calculator. And we're going to pretend that this is choice A. So I would start with choice A, and I would put in 20x squared. And whatever multiple choice answer gives me the same answer, the same value, as the original expression.